Hey guys, welcome back. It is Bunny Vulture again, and today is episode number four of my Feed the Beast Unstable series. Today we're going to delve into power generation. Um, it's something I kind of put off a little bit later than I normally would have, uh, simply because of some of the other cool mods that I wanted to delve into to make things a little bit easier. Um, uh, I am currently running uh, the updated version of Feed the Beast uh, Unstable, which is 1.0.8, uh, and that has updated a few mods to fix some issues that I had in the previous video, um, especially the one with uh, Batania. I was trying to make the um, Sojourner staff right here, and ever since the you know, I did the upgrade, and now I was able to make it, which fixed the Rune of Air uh, problem that I was having that I couldn't craft that. So as soon as I updated, I uh, went to see if that fixed that issue, and sure enough, I was able to craft it without any issue. Uh, so I went ahead and used my Rune of Earth that I had, crafted up myself a Rune of Air, put it all in the uh, crafting table, and made myself this little guy. And if you remember, the Sojourner Staff <coughs> excuse me, it allows you to run faster, uh, move around a lot faster. And if you'll notice, that's why I'm able to move around at a pretty good clip. Um, I also have another piece of uh, armor on me here. Notice um, these dark lettings which have speed 3 on them, but I'll, I'll go ahead and take those off and show you that I can still move around pretty decently. Uh, the other thing it allows you to do is step up kind of so that's pretty nice and i don't have to jump or you know do anything so that's pretty nice so yeah i had to make that uh once i was able to craft it because that was just another that along with the uh ring ring of magnetization is pretty awesome um the other thing I did in the between the last episode and this one with the advanced genetics was to go get myself some additional DNA. I went into the nether and scraped up a pig man, made them all angry face at me, and got the uh, swim in lava gene. Uh, so as you can imagine, <clears throat> being able to swim in lava and not take damage from lava in fire in general makes the going to the nether... Um, pretty nice. That combined with the bat gene so I can fly, flying around, not taking damage from lava, pretty much makes the nether kind of easy sauce right now. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some of the stuff I've been doing on the off-camera world. Um, made a couple other chests to uh, contain stuff and uh, we're going to be addressing that in the next episode. I'll, I'll be getting into the applied energistics too. Um, I, I started doing a little bit of it. Um, I think I got uh, um, it's probably here somewhere. Maybe not. Is it in there? No. I thought I put some of it away somewhere. I had some, and this is, and if you haven't noticed, this is why I need applied energistics, is to organize all my stuff. Um, but yeah, I started making some of this stuff, um, but I thought I'd better make that into a video. But I wanted to, essentially in order to do that, I would need to get into power generation. So, before we get to what needs power, I need to get power. Um, and normally in my last monster series, I used thermal expansion quite extensively. I made a lot of dy dynamos, primarily the magmatic dynamos. Um, I was a big fan of using the endothermic pump and using the lava tank and using those things and getting a lot of power. However, in um, Unstable, the uh, conduits that provide power are not updated yet, so we don't have those. I could still use the magmatic dynamos and just use a different type of cable, but I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and use a different mod to generate power. So I have decided to go ahead and use the Ender IO mod. It's a mod that I haven't gotten into yet um, in any of my previous uh, series, so I thought I'll go ahead and give it a try. To start with, I've um, made what's called the sterling generator. Now this is a lot more powerful than your standard sterling generator. Um, 
by default, I'll take this little guy out of there, it generates 20 RF per tick and it burns at two times the tick. So that means this is gonna burn, burn through this blaze rod at twice the speed. Not great, um, but Ender Idaho has these little upgrades you can get. They're called capacitators. And what you can do is you just put these guys in there and they'll, you know, basically upgrade your machine. Uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to get at least the double layer capacitor. And I, th I don't really think these basic ones do anything because uh, they don't have any, you know, shift information on them uh, that you can do. So they're not, they're pretty easy to make. All it takes is a copper ignit, some gold nuggets, and redstone. Real easy. You combine those with uh, a couple electrical steel and some coal powder. And to make the electrical steel, you'll need an alloy smelter, some coal, uh, iron, and silicon. To get the silicon, you can use uh, clay and a sag mill. Oh, wow, that, that means you kind of need a bunch of machines to get the upgrade. Well, that's right. So you got to start off slow, but that's all right. So you make your sag mill, which is this little guy. And these are all pretty easy to make with some flint, some iron, uh, machine chassis and a capacitator again and all that is is some iron bars and some iron nuggets the alloy smelter is just some furnace some stone copper and basically same thing so i've done your basic machine setup one on either side and then once you have those guys you can make these guys and what this does is it increases the energy storage and speed and range of your machine so what that one what that guy does if um I wonder if I have any more of those around. I might have used it. And I think I used it all. But what that did was that doubled my... Oh, am I at max? Oh, wow. Generating nothing now. Uh, it changed it from 20 RF, but to, uh, from 20 up to 40, and it took the burn rate down to 1.5, which was pretty good. I doubled my power generation, and I was, you know, using... A little 50% less fuel, I think. Yeah, 50% less fuel. Maybe. I forgot, whatever it is. But then I thought, well, maybe I wonder what the next level is. And then the high is these octatic capacitors. And to make these, you're going to need two of those, some glowstone, and some vibrant alloy. And to make that, you're going to need an energetic alloy and an ender pearl. To make the energetic, you need some gold, glowstone, and redstone. So none of these things are too bad to get with the exception of the ender pearl right there. Going out and finding some endermen to kill, a little bit of a pain, um, especially since in this mod pack the it, it, we don't have the roguelike dungeons. That's sorely missed because then I could just go down in there, find the little endermen spawner, and go attack them. But I got a way around that now. Um, anyway, I was able to get one of those, and that upgrades it to 80 RF per tick and a burn rate of 1, which is pretty awesome. Um, I also made another one accidentally. I think I was trying to make something else, maybe? I don't know. Um, so I just put it there. I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, I also got a wireless charger. Uh, I just made that actually right before I started recording and what that does is it allows you to charge items in your inventory and nearby up to a 24 block radius which is pretty impressive um, and that is how I charged up my dark leggings uh, it also worked for charging up uh, other items I have it'll, I'm, I'm not sure if it'll work for the uh, like the resonant capacitors with thermal expansion I'm not sure if it'll work with that but if it does that's pretty awesome. Um, I may end up switching out the dark armor here I have uh, that I'm making for the redstone arsenal stuff, but I'm going to give this a shot, uh, mainly because I, when I was flying around in the nether and just killing stuff in general, uh, this is basically just iron armor. It's, it has a higher enchantability, so it's going to wear down. Uh, so, you know, I lost my boots first and then my legs, and now I'm getting worn down. So instead of using up my iron to make another set of that, and as well as mana, I decided to go ahead and give the Ender IO equivalent for armor a shot. Uh, to make this stuff, it's uh, pretty easy. It's just uh, requires these dark steel ignits, which is just obsidian, coal powder, and iron, and you craft it the same way you would the regular armor. And I have the rest of it sitting over here. Oh. Yeah, just sitting here in a, in a danger chest. Um, 
not doing anything. And basically what you would do is you would put uh, this in an anvil along with, well, let me go ahead and grab this temporarily just to show you what it would take. Or I'm not sure if I can actually do that yet. Can I? No. Um, there's kind of a progression of enchantability for this stuff. Uh, to make it to where you have now, you need a vibrant crystal as your first enchant item. And that essentially empowers your armor. Uh, to make that, you need a vibrant alloy, uh, and you just put that in the crafting thing right here, and that gives you nine of those. And you put those around an uh, anvil, and that and it basically empowers it to level one. Which is nice, and you know, puts a little battery charge on it, but it doesn't really get you anything. Um, and then from there, you can put in your basic one first, and then this one, and then this one. And depending upon what uh, you want, uh, you can put other stuff on it. So, um, right as you can see there on the uh, tooltip, it says glider, and you would need glider wings. Uh, I don't really need glider wings since I can fly, so it's kind of eh, don't really need that. Um, now the legs, on the other hand, is what gives you speed, and you can put a potion of swiftness on there. So I've done that, and that's why I'm able to move around pretty quickly. Um, that's one of the things I really uh, liked about Dartcraft and uh, FTB Unleashed, um, was I was able to move around at pretty ridiculous speeds. I mean, it was, I mean back in Unleashed, Dartcraft was pretty overpowered. Um, I remember killing like a wither with my hand and getting like 50 nether stars, so probably a little cheaty uh, back in Unleashed, but it's probably, you know, I'm sure I know they've changed it uh, a little bit, but still, it's, it was a cool mod, and I, I, you know, one of the cool things I always look for is being able, number one, being able to fly, and number two, being able to get around pretty quick. Uh, so now that I can do that, I'm pretty happy. Um, so yeah. Uh, back to the other stuff that I've made with Ender IO. Uh, I wanted to, I had the, I moved these guys indoors uh, because I wanted to automate the process a little bit. So I've built the Ender IO equivalent of a farming machine, and that is a farming station. So basically, you just use these little uh, cables, energy conduits here, move, give it some power, and it'll farm up, oops, farm up your stuff. And you just give it a hoe and I'm not putting into a chest here at the end and as you can see here I've got a few stacks of the essence berries awesome uh, now you may be wondering how I've gotten you know so many blaze rods have I been you know standing around another killing blazes at first yeah I was uh, mainly just flying around and trying to kill the wither skeletons for their wither skulls because I got four of those again uh, so I'll be killing another wither here, here soon but as you can see here I've gotten a few more stacks of blaze rods and if you listen closely you may be hearing the little hint of how I've gotten all these little things down here a little bit is a little hole in the wall I created and in here you will see I have a vacuum chest from Ender IO, and basically this just and like it says, it's, ooh, wow, that is noisy. Let me do something about that here. Here we go. So basically, just this sucks, just, just takes, uh, sucks up items off the ground and deposits it into the inventory. And I got a healthy supply of that. How am I doing this, you might ask? Well, I got a autonomous activator sitting right on top of it. And inside, I have a scythe. And on that, I've used a manual scythe head, paper tough binding, slime tough rod, and paper tough rod. Uh, together, it gives me uh, nine hearts of damage with uh, looting three, fortune three, and you know, the quartz on there. Pretty, pretty nice and simple. And the durability is high enough to where it lasts pretty nicely. Um, so I just sits right on top of that and I got some dark glass here from Extra Utilities and I have a simple little open blocks tank with a drain on top of it to take the XP from the um, blazes, deposit that down into my liquid XP drum. And I got 90, eh, about 98 and a half buckets uh, of liquid XP. So I can use that in an enchanter later on. 
Now I may switch this out to a sewer from Mine Factory Loaded to start gathering uh, mob essence. In fact, I probably will once this is full. Um, that way I can, you know, um, use this for the other thing that I'll show you here in a second. But all that is is a simple little blaze spawner from the nether that I took using the... Where is it? Did it break or was I able to retain it? I think it might have actually broken the last time I used it. I think it did. Um, but the way I was able to bring that back was to use the diamond dolly from Jabba. And what this does is a simple dolly and all that is is some wood, iron, and this one's just some diamonds to it. And this allows you to transport and pick up, well the normal one allows you to pick up um, chests and move them around when they're full. The diamond one allows you to pick up spawners. Um, so what I did was I just picked it up, put it in my inventory, and brought it back here. And all this is is a simple uh, two by six room, I think. Um, and then it's surrounded on all sides pretty thickly with no opening so they, they, the blazes can't spawn anywhere else. So yeah, they just spawn there while I'm kind of close by. And I got this, you need those, that little green area there is not the XP. Uh, it is actually slime channels. And I've decided to use slime channels because they're a lot more configurable uh, movement wise rather than conveyor belts. And I'll show you here um, what I mean by that. If I can find my, oh, I so need applied energetics very much badly. Let's see where, well, I'll take, I'll take you and where is my purple? Where's my purple slime? I don't need it. I suppose I can use, can I use this? Yeah, so, so I used the slime block and some redstone and I got a slime channel. So let's go ahead and make up, I'm gonna need a fair amount of this. So I'll go ahead and make up 20 of that. There we go. So basically, now that I got your slime channel, I can go ahead and put it down. And you know, it's kind of like a half black, or uh, a half block, and you put it on there and it guides you where you wanna go. But the cool thing is, if you say you got some mobs in the corner, you can put it down diagonal wise. So it's kind of functions like water in a way. So as opposed to a conveyor belt, which would just guide you, you know, straight in one direction, or, you know, either, you know, you know, in one direction, these will kind of gather you in corners, which I kind of like. Um, it's probably unnecessary, but, you know, I like the way it works and it's something different. So yeah, I will be using that in my next spawner room. And the spawner room you may be wondering is probably be using a blaze one simply because I can get blaze rods and provide power. But the other thing is I'm gonna be, I went out and grabbed a enderman in a safari net. Now I don't need ender pearls for a ton of things, but I do like to not have to go out in the world and kill them when I need them. So I figured what I would do is as I would create a, um, let's see, uh, let, me, no, let me go this way. I will use my in factory reloaded. And I can use a auto spawner to do that. Now I will need to go get another emerald because I've used some of my emeralds for those vibrant crystals, but what I can do with this is I will use my blazes to create some mob essence, uh, put that in a little portable tank, and put fill up a little portable uh, powered cell, and create a little room, and then go into the room and just kill endermen kind of on demand. I don't really need to generate tons of them yet, um, but that'll at least get me started, and I won't have to go about looking for them since I don't think there's any Enderman's actual spawners anywhere. 
Um, I could be wrong if you, if you guys happen to know of where I could actually find an Enderman spawner, that'd be cool. I'd like to go get it. Um, the other option I think I'm going to go with uh, after I create just a powered spawner for the Enderman is to use um, another mod that I have never really gotten into all that much is Ganny's Nether. And there's some cool stuff in here. Uh, I mainly like some of the stuff. Uh, there's some cool decoration stuff in here too. Um, there's some of these yellow glow boxes, which is just some glowstone and some glass panes, and it's kind of like a little light pillar. So I'm thinking about using those. Uh, there's also some um, colored quartz you can get, um, some furnace, some uh, clear dark glass, some soul glass, which is just soul sand to melt up. Um, the other cool thing is this horse armor stand. I'll definitely be using that. That's really cool. But there's also these extended spawners. And basically what that is, is you go out and find any regular vanilla spawner you can find. And you can change it to what you want. Is you can get some of these spawn eggs. And as you can see here, there's spawn wither and spawn normal skeleton. And I think I have both of those sitting in a chest... Yeah, right here. So I got a spawn wither skeleton and a spawn normal skeleton egg. So guess which one I'm gonna use? Yeah. So basically what you do is you can use this on any regular uh, spawner and change it to what you want. So I will go into the nether, flop down a skeleton or any spawner that I have, change it over to a wither, wither skeleton spawner, and then you can use um, this guy, the upgrade tier zero, and all that is, is this a nether core with some block coals. Nether core is fairly expensive. Uh, wither skeleton skull, gas tier and whatnot. But what this allows you to do is it instantly upgrades it uh, to a kind of an automated spawner in the same kind of vein as the um, soul cages are. Not, uh, not as easy, well, I, I shouldn't say easy, not as easy, but different than the Soul Cages mod uh, is. Basically what you do is you can make these several different upgrades and now you these, this is a progressive uh, thing. So you gotta make each of those, each of these if you wanna upgrade it. So you start with the coal, then you go to the iron, and then there's lapis, gold, diamond, emerald, nether star, woo. Um, now these are all in order and I think you don't have to, and this one's even a dragon egg, I don't think you have to do all of these to start doing these guys here. I don't, don't think. I think you can... Well, first upgrade, plus two slots, plus two slots. Hmm. In any case, the ones I, I'm really looking for is this guy. Spawner will ignore light levels and dimension. That's awesome. And also, where is it? Yeah. Spawner will run even if there's no players nearby. That's a big one. And the other thing is this thing, got it, just like a vanilla spawner, it doesn't require power. So I don't have to worry about providing it like a... Uh, uh, the auto spawner from Mine Factory Loaded or the other spawner I made here, which is the powered spawner from Ender.io. I originally made one of these, but I wasn't liking how I had to power it. I did some testing with it and I had to supplied power and I wasn't impressed with the spawn rates. I know you can upgrade it uh, with the same um, machine upgrades, but I just, I, I didn't want a power spawner. I wanted to get stuff from a spawner to power other things. Um, and the vanilla, the vanilla spawners were a pretty good idea of that. And I like to, you know, break up things a little bit. Uh, I'll use uh, Ender.io for my power generation and I'll use Ganys for my mob generation. Yeah, I think that'll work. Um, so yeah, uh, there's some a couple other things I wanted to show you. Uh, so let me go over to another little area, and I will be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. And here I'm out at another area that I've deemed my new base. Uh, I haven't built up all that much over here. I got a little bit of structure that I in kind of the same vein that I built on the other server, but I think. I'm going to go ahead and tear that down. I got another idea in mind for what I'm going to build. Um, but what I've got going over here is a tree farm. 
that's not going anywhere simply because I got the barrel all full of wood already. And I got a fair amount of saplings in here. I am using the um, harvester from Mine Factory Reloaded, as well as the planter in there, and then a combination that with extra utilities. I got some lava generators here going uh, with some lava drums on top that are uh, maybe about a quarter of the way through their lava generation and all three of those in, with the lava generators produced me with a barrel full of wood not too bad I also got a beginnings a, a blood magic altar here going uh, I haven't really started with anything with this but I wanted to kind of get the space uh, allocated for it and then I'll start building stuff around it um, this is going to be my new base area that once I get started into applied energistics and am able to transport all of my items a lot easier. Um, I like the grass over here, the color of it better, and it's just a little bit more of an open space that I have to work with. So I will be transporting over here probably in the next uh, few episodes and whatnot, but I wanted to at least get a little bit of an area going and whatnot. So that'll be it for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave me a like, and until next time, see you later.